And incidentally, the play that we were watching and that I was invited for was called What Women Want. <laughs> I mean, you are now <laughs> going into very, very tricky territory. By the time, kind of time came to give JE exam, exam, although I'd filled the form and given the fees, I was like, you know, I'm not prepared. Come on. After one exam, or the first exam, which was the maths exam, I came back home for lunch. I ate the, the center was pretty close to my house and I actually watched a movie, you know, and then I... Which picture did you remember? Yeah, I remember this movie was that year, it was coming up to you, so Gupt. Hello and welcome to another episode of Beyond the Boardroom. I'm Tajish Singh and my guests today, or rather guests today, are a husband and wife team of Vipin Preet Singh and Upasana Taku of Moby Quick. Welcome to the show, Vipin and Upasana. Thank you so much for taking the time out and welcoming us to your home. Thank you. Thanks, Tajish. So let's first address the elephant in the room. A husband and wife couple starting up, uh, founding a company, working together, and of course, you know, back at home. How do you two keep your sanity both at work and at home? Well, you want to go first? Well, firstly, I want to tell you that I resisted a lot. I did not want to overcomplicate my life. So, Moby Quick is his brainchild. It was his idea. And I was encouraging him after I met that you should definitely fulfill your entrepreneurial dreams. So, he got started without me. Although I knew a lot about payments because I used to work for PayPal as a product manager in the US before I moved back to India. But I resisted because I did not want to intertwine my personal and professional life. And that went on for like a good six to nine months. And then when I realized that he's a man of conviction and whether or not sort of the ragtag initial team he had put together was there to support him, he kept going. He was working like 22 hours. And uh, then I realized that why am I resisting so much? Risk to hai. Like if something goes wrong in personal life, it will affect the venture. If something goes wrong in the venture, it will affect personal life as well. But then I finally committed that I will help you and we will build Movie Quick together. Vipin, I recall you mentioning the first time you met her was uh, while watching a play at Habitat Center with common friends. Uh, take us back in time. You know, I mean, I had just come back from Bangalore. Uh, to stay with my parents here in Delhi and uh, at that time you know I was building up my social life so to speak <laughs> and one of the ways to build up your social life in Delhi circles is to go and watch plays was what I was advised and <laughs> so yeah I think through some friends uh, you know I was invited to uh, to watch a play uh, one common friend and um, because I happened to be the local person there uh, in, in Delhi, rest of the people were actually, some of them were foreigners, some of them from different places. So they gave me the task of uh, standing outside Stain Auditorium in India Habitat Center um, to give directions to a certain lady uh, who was trying to find her way to India Habitat Center. Oh and this God. is talking about, you know, pre-Google Maps uh, era. So effectively, I was the navigator, the <laughs> Google Maps uh, for that day. So yeah, I mean, that's how I got her number. Uh, <laughs> you know, she called me and, and, and I was uh, on the phone. And incidentally, the play that we were watching and that I was invited for was called What Women Want. <laughs> and uh, I guess, you know, I'm kind of living that <laughs> since the day I watched that play. You married in 2011? 2011. So <clears throat> from your side, was it like love at first sight or... Uh, how did the, you know, courtship go? I mean, there is, there is love at first sight, etc, etc. See, I cannot go into the gory details. Uh, you know, I think uh, uh, how love happens, you know, and what, what is first sight. But what I can tell you is that, you know, I think most important thing that at least I had realized and you come to realize is that uh, thinking process and value system alignment is very important. I should be able to talk to somebody, if you have to live with somebody, uh, you know, or eat food with somebody all the time and, you know, <laughs> you have to have certain kind of things that align and I think that goes beyond love. And then the lastly, the thing is, if both of you are working together, 
I, where where do you have the time for dating, right? Uh, might as well, you know, <laughs> uh, get uh, get going. So I think we were kind of, I would say, you know, we met and then this whole story had to unfold in this manner. So who proposed to whom? And were your families uh, on board? Till this day, he has not proposed to me. And neither have I. Bas aise hi. We have just been living along. I mean, Shadi bhi ho gayi, bache bhi ho gaye. So we are friends first. <laughs> we are of course co-founders. And a uh, lot many partners in lot many other things. So yeah, I mean, we are equal. Why should I propose, right? <laughs> <laughs> Now, now you're bringing the equality. And we stay uh, talking about it on Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I did get coffee for in the morning. <laughs> good, good. And your families were okay with? Well, I think our family, at least my family and probably her family also, she can talk about that. Um, they knew that, you know, I mean, of course, they were not even in favor of uh, me giving up my job. So I, I'm a eldest son in the family and you know, we uh, came from fairly tough situations financially and having a job and, you know, giving up that job to start something where I'm talking about pre-funding era, there was no funding available at that time uh, to do something where the outcome is unknown. You know, that was kind of not a very positive thing. So, um, yeah, so but they knew that, you know, I have come to a phase in life that I'm not going to listen to anybody. Right. <laughs> and so even when it comes to therefore personal life, they were like, you know, beta shadi kar lena. But, <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter who, who she is, but it's important you get married. I recall uh, you've gone on record, in fact, on this, that uh, she is uh, more direct and confrontational, while you are the more diplomatic one when it comes to work. And uh, you also had very vicious fights at work after which you had to go to the employees and assuage them that you two are not splitting up. <laughs> My curiosity is, if you are the more diplomatic one, how did the fights happen? <laughs> well, uh, see, uh, I mean, I think there are different flavors to our personalities. Uh, while she is the direct one, she is uh, she's also very objective and uh, I would say she is much more forthcoming to people and she connects at a much more deeper and personal level with people compared to me. I am more, much more business minded that way, at least when it comes to work. Right? There's, there is certainly that difference in our personalities. Uh, but you know, having worked with her and how now, now I think, I would say in my view, the rules have actually reversed. Um, many times it's the other way around now that she has to go and tell employees that don't mind what Vipin has said, you know, <laughs> he's, he's just, you know, venting out or uh, trying to uh, meet the goals that we have set uh, for the company. But I think these things change. I think these personalities also change. I was a very different person when I was in college. That is true. I was an out and out introvert. So, Pasna, I want to ask you, I mean, what happens when there is a strong disagreement at work between the two of you? Uh, are you able to switch off when you get home or does the baggage carry home also? So I think <clears throat> there is a pre and post Kaz era. Kaz is our son. Um, his name is Kazmir, but we call him Kaz. I think pre Kaz, everything used to come home and everything from home also used to go to the office and it was hard to sort of you know, manage if you had a fight at or a major tiff at home and then you are in a meeting with people and you have to hold straight faces and you can't bring your personal uh, feelings uh, in your discussions that day, right? It should not have a bearing. So I think we were, we are also, you know, you also grow as a founder, as an entrepreneur. So I think we've also matured much more. So pre having a child, you know, there was less structure and there was more work discussions at the dining table at home and uh, things were going the other way around also. I think post having a child, you realize that, oh, now you have a family. Your young one doesn't care that he or she is concerned about, you know, what fun things am I going to talk about my parents and like, you know, what uh, pranks can you do? So, you know, that whole narrative, uh, you know, thankfully has changed and boundaries have become a little more evident. Of course, every now and then when there is something monumental that happens, 
but uh, definitely there's far more sanity. We try to leave work as much as possible in the office. Yes. You have two missions. One is uh, building MobiQuick uh, into a very uh, large and profitable fintech and the second mission is staying married. And you know, I'll go back to one of the questions you were asking that was there family support? I think there was huge family support for us to get married. In fact, both of our parents ganged up together to get us together in a spot in a room uh, just to have that conversation. Ki ab tumne kisi aur ko to milna hai nahi. Anyways, you are so close to each other. So why the hell are you not getting married? Because ye kaam, kaam, kaam to chalta hi rahega. And I think we were both 32 uh, by that time. So they were like, you know, you, so basically they pushed us, of course we would have also liked to, but we were happy, you know, uh, just being partners to each, each other and not getting into the formal uh, whole thing of marriage and families, extended families, etc. So on that front, they were all very supportive. Doesn't matter that, you know, we are from different religions, from different um, cultures, subcultures within India. I think on the work front, I think both of our families independently, not knowing each other, were very anti. Like my family was anti ki ye kyu, why is she giving up a very nice cushy job and career in Silicon Valley and like you know me people are sitting around for years waiting for a green card and I already have one and I gave all of that up and said ki mujhe start up karni hai, apni company kholni hai aur wo bhi India mein karni hai because India mein opportunity hai. His family was at oh my god like business has not been kind to us. Once upon a time his father had a business which had a huge uh, you know, financial downturn after the 84 riots and they never recovered from that. So it had taken so many years for him to grow up and then other siblings still in college. And then when he decided to start up, he was the main breadwinner of the family. So it was a very, very difficult and hard decision for him. And I kind of told him or helped him or encouraged him. I was that neutralizing force, but I, I heard the fact that there was risk. So what I was telling him is that you better make sure that you have one one and a half years of corpus for your family survival. Ek saal try kar lo. Ek saal mein agar you can pay yourself a salary from your business, then you can keep going. Otherwise, you'll always get a high paying job. So one year later, you know, you fold down the company and take up a... So that's how he took the risk. So it was a bigger risk for him. I did not have any financial uh, responsibilities. Uh, you know, my father was also um, earning well at the time. So you two have clearly demarcated uh, areas of responsibility at work. What about the home? <laughs> I mean, you are now Such bolna hai, bolna. going into very, very <laughs> tricky territory. Um, yeah, because, you know, there is no right answer <laughs> to this. Uh, but I think she can probably try. So I think he has his, firstly I'll say that he's a far more share the load kind of a person and he likes to be a very hands-on dad. But he has his areas that he likes. Areas of improvement. Areas of interest. So, if he has football, sports, cricket, TT, whatever he wants to play, I'll take him to the class, I'll set him up for the class. Um, he's a little bit of school. Ka. But otherwise, cleanliness, health, clothes, the room is a mess, all of that, like, kabhi kabhi, like, I would say 60-40. We are in a, we are otherwise in a 50-50 equal equality relationship, but I think that we are far better than most Indian families. You went through a very tumultuous phase in your childhood, you know, the genocide of 84, which directly impacted your family yeah. and all. Uh, you're, of course, very young at that time. I think four years old or a little over four yeah, years old. Five, yeah. About five and all. But he's and, lived in a camp. Yeah, and could you just take us through those days? Did you, I mean, at that point of time, do you think you realized what was happening around you? Uh, so, of course, I remember, uh, you know, a few moments. Of course, not all of them, but I do remember some moments. I do remember the night we spent in a camp uh, because basically... Uh, that night, uh, you know, there were apparently people out there um, searching for six out in in a in a place. So I was born in Raudkila, and it's not uh, there are some six there, but of course it's it's not that um, that many. And so we were one of the few houses, and so we had to go and uh, stay in a camp just to be safe. Nothing really untoward happened, but I think that 
uh, was one of the bad experience i do remember also uh, in my um, in my memories the, the 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 photograph of our shop which was the main uh, place of business for my dad uh, being completely burnt down uh, that was the only sex shop in that kind of market uh, in Raurkela and so I do remember that as well. Um, I think we tried to recover from that. I mean, it's of course left uh, a fair bit of impression on my life. One of the things I think since early on I was, you know, there was a phase in my in my life where I was where I didn't, of course, when I was very young and didn't think so much about what I need to do or you know, you're you're just a kid. But I think post that incident and uh, maybe I, I something changed in me and I became more serious about what do I want to do and generally more serious about studies because that was the only thing we had no option so we had to move to Delhi um, we literally kind of had nothing I, I remember um, you know taking the train from Raudkela Junction station and I had to literally take the gas stove and the cylinder uh, from the platform and had my mom out I was all of maybe seven, eight years old and take it to the, take it inside the bogey and, and we took it. That was all the stuff we took and came to Delhi. You got it from Rorkela to Delhi, the gas. Yeah. Was, the I think, you know, we don't, we don't think about it so much at that time. Having a gas cylinder was, <laughs> you or not having it, you know, this was, uh, was also a very big deal. So being that here and then living with uh, my mom's family. Uh, you know, and then eventually having our own kind of one room house. So I've lived in a house where you literally had one room and a kitchen. The kitchen also doubled up as a bathroom, right? So there are parts of the kitchen which are like a bathroom. So, and we were five of us. We lived in that house. So, of course, I remember all of it. One of the things I think that instilled in me at that time at least was I became very serious about that I have to succeed in life so that phase made you an introvert uh, you would say yeah i mean i think you know it was kind of you know um, you go to college um, and um, you know uh, i didn't stay in hostel in iit by the way uh, because we couldn't afford it so i had to do up and down from my house 20 kilometers from like west delhi to south delhi a um, few of them so yeah i mean that was a very a phase of struggle uh, to get to IIT and then post IIT as well. You have a very interesting story about uh, your IIT entrance also. I believe you cleared it uh, two years consecutively, 97 and 98. So why didn't you join in 97? Yeah, so that's an interesting story. So like I said, you know, I was working really hard to clear JE. And um, I, was, I think I, in hindsight, I was working too hard. Okay, so uh, and you know, like I was like crazy about it that I have to do it, I have to get it, something like that. And there was a lot of pressure that I put on myself uh, that I had to clear it. Um, and I did clear it. I got a decent rank. I, of course, you don't ever forget your JE rank. So uh, first year that I gave uh, in '97, I got it something like 11, 27. Um, that's again all India. Uh, good, decent, I would say, you know, even in today's uh, kind of day and age. And I could have got decent branch in any of the IITs. Um, but I got computer science at uh, uh, BHU. And um, IIT Delhi, I couldn't get anything. You know, IIT Delhi, I actually wanted to study electronics or electrical or something like that. And of course, I had given Delhi College of Engineering exam as well. And I had gotten electronics there. So the pick was between studying electronics at Delhi College of Engineering, staying in Delhi and paying very low fees uh, versus going and staying in a hostel in Banaras to study at IDBHU and study computer science. I think the answer was very clear that there was no option. You had to do it here and EC is a, is a you know, very good college, uh, one of the top 10 in, in India. So I went there and um, I forgot about it, to be honest. For a while because college is good new campus new friends first year in college but somewhere in the back of mind there were some other people also were saying yeah iit to iit hota hai. you know, go and you know 
think about giving IIT again. Some of the people in DC do that. So I like, you know, okay, maybe I'll also do it and I'll also explore. So I put in maybe 25% of the effort that I put in previous year. And uh, by the time kind of time came to give JE exam, exam, although I'd filled the form and given the fees, I was like, you know, I'm not prepared. Come on. You know, last year I tried so hard and I got this rank. What am I going to get this year? Uh, why even bother? But my mom was like, you know, you filled the form, 500 rupees diye, jaake exam deya, kya bhoot kuchha. That's how crazy we are. So, <laughs> so, so I actually went and gave the exam. I remember distinctly, in, you know, this physics, chemistry and maths, right? Three subjects used to be there in, in IIT at that time uh, for entrance. After one exam, or the first exam, which was the maths exam, I came back home for lunch, right? The, this, the center was pretty close to my house. And I actually watched a movie, you know, <laughs> and then, then, you know, I said, you know, this was actually fairly easy. Maybe I'll go the second, go and do the second one. Anyway, it's like fun. So I watched, actually watched a movie. I still remember. And then I was gave the exam. Movie? Yeah, I remember this movie was that year. It was coming on TV. It was Gupt. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like Bobby Joel with something, casual something happening. Uh, it's quite funny. So I gave the exams and I totally forgot about it. And then when the when the results came, I didn't even know today's result day, by the way, because I had zero <laughs> expectations. But apparently somebody was, I, we, there were no smartphones or phones at that time. I didn't have a phone. But apparently some of my friends, like they were calling and saying that somebody's calling you from this particular place and something you have to do, go and do. And then I got the news that, you know, I have, I have gotten 264. Wow. As a rank. And I was like, dude, like, really? I mean, I couldn't believe myself. And then I said, I have to celebrate. So I went to a roadside, this banta shop. <laughs> and I actually had a banta with lemon. It was a hot summer day, right? And I enjoyed myself. And I came home. And actually, the first conversation I had with my parents, of course, they were very happy. My mom was very happy. Dad was very happy. The first conversation I had, and you wouldn't believe it, was, are we going to do this? <laughs> because, you know, it was still a 50-50. Because it would mean losing one year and studying for four more years before I can start earning uh, as a full-time job. And of course, you know, ID fees had by that time had increased quite a bit, you know. And unlike uh, what we would like to believe, Getting loans, etc. was not that easy. Uh, I don't know how the situation is today, but that was one of the things I remember. So we had to actually borrow money from somebody to pay the application fees for the first semester. Upasana, I also want to come to uh, you know, touch upon the topic of uh, women entrepreneurs. And uh, you have recounted in the past, you know, the uh, kind of uh, misogyny that you have faced, you know, uh, especially, you know, when you were starting Moby Quick. Uh, while you are free to recount those instances and all, uh, you know, I would also like to ask something that the fact that you get identified as a women or a woman entrepreneur, is it like a double-edged sword that, you know, your uh, achievements as an entrepreneur get overshadowed by your gender? Do you feel that? Or do you feel that it's a kind of a okay trade-off because there are other women looking up to you? It's a fantastic question, by the way. And it is definitely a double-edged sword, uh, sword and there are times when I don't go to, you know, any um, event uh, where the panel is just for women entrepreneurs because I'll say that, okay, call me for the mainstream event. Why are you calling me for the women's session? Wherever you're discussing finance, financial services or technology, call me in that with all the, doesn't matter if there are all the male uh, peers, I am not afraid. Uh, but then there are other times when uh, I do feel that it is also important, uh, you know, not to be so upset about being called a woman founder. So very recently we have seen, uh, you know, Startup India, um, the arm of the government under Invest India, uh, the president's office, uh, Métis, trying to do different initiatives which are supposed to uh, help women at the grassroots uh, follow their entrepreneurial dreams. So I think in those initiatives, I, I find it important, uh, you know, to go because I think that it inspires more women. See, it's, it's 
things have changed and you know i've also been doing this now for 14 years things have definitely improved for the better whether it is from the government or regulatory perspective whether it is from the venture capital or investment perspective or whether it is from just leaders uh, you know in the general workforce you see more women you see more women in stem you see more women in technology companies also but the larger narrative is not completely appended yet because this female participation especially at leadership levels is still sub 10% today i see many more women founders uh, but i'm i can tell you i think 2017 or 18 i went to a goldman sachs uh, event in hong kong for asian tech startups so of course it had india china and uh, you know all the other countries and from the indian contingent i was the only woman and all the years preceding that bipin had been going so i had never known that so when i went there of course i mingled with them all of that but the chinese contingent had like 20% or 25% women participation so you know that hit me and so i decided i will also do something about it so um i started my own um, i started a group and now you know many women are participating in it it's only uh, women startup founders and it's become like almost a group of like 500 or more and it's a very open forum people ask for help people in early stage startups are asking women who are in later stage startups that how do i negotiate with my investors uh, how do i hire the senior exec who doesn't seem to be comfortable so i think it's helping in some small ways many of these initiatives will help but while there are some of these platforms and initiatives that are helping uh, women uh, who want to make a difference and want to be uh, founders there are many other they are just doing it for the media narrative then there's this other narrative where it is still acceptable in people's mind like some senior person said in a panel that you know it was on gender equality diversity oh i asked my hr ed to do things about this so it's acceptable for women to be in those teams hr teams or even leaders of those teams marketing pr but you ask people that how many people have a woman cto how many people have a woman cfo it is still not acceptable somehow the larger narrative is that ladkiyon ko coding nahi aati 01 nahi aata bits and bytes nahi aata ladkiyon ko maths nahi aata are ghar kaise chal rahe hain sabke let me change uh, tracks now and uh, come to both of you i mean uh, so how is it that uh, the two of you de stress relax in your spare time if you get any that is i can go first i mean i have two hobbies currently which are ongoing i am trying to pick up a third um the first one is football so i've played 50 football games in the last 12 months right and that's on on an average you can say that uh, you know it's about kind of at least once a week or twice a week i have played uh, football and i play mostly with youngsters some of them from uh, mobiquick itself so that just i get the space uh, to play on the ground they allow the boss to win uh, <laughs> uh, at least they don't follow me so uh, but i enjoy that it's keeping me fit and uh, keeps me fresh for all the thinking that i need to do and the second one is uh, you know riding a bike and so i have kind of a super bike which uh, which i ride sometimes occasionally uh, on the weekends and these two are things that i really enjoy also you know kind of time away from uh, you know from co-founders/partners/work and you know i think that i have been telling her as well that as we grow up we have so many things all that piling up in our head that that is very very necessary you also have a penchant for biking upasna don't you well i don't know i've become a boring person i think after i've become <coughs> a mature woman i would say when i used to live in the us by the way i was joking about it i had a bicycle i had a kawasaki ninja motorcycle and i had a convertible car and i had a license for all of them and i rode all of them to work and otherwise also for fun but um, i think that i'm not riding his bike uh i'm going pillion uh, i don't feel safe riding a bike in india although i drive the car everywhere so that's a passion i have not picked up yet i'll have to work on it but yeah i think uh, i have a long lost uh, love for reading writing and also music so those are things that i'm trying to redevelop in the last uh, year or so and uh, a final question to both of you if you were to reverse your roles at mobiquick would you do it Yeah, very happily. 
reverse your roles as in in terms of the responsibilities that he's handling you, you know you handle and the responsibilities that you are handling he handles really i think you know we are adaptable we would have done it but i think you know just like water finds its own level <laughs> i equilibrium level we found our equilibrium level and and we it's we enjoy what we do i enjoy what i do i i love product building products i love talking to engineers they are like nerds you know and there is a strong part of nerd inside me um so i connect with them at a deeper level uh and uh, yeah i think she is of course you know she can talk about it but f- between the two of us you can see where the glamour is you know you can see where where the you know the communication is and where the personality is so she does what she does because she's good at it he doesn't like to talk so much he's improved over the years so i think for the see over the years we've also changed and swapped our roles around but currently what i do most of my functions are corporate functions or external facing and the other the key ones are you know hiring the best talent uh, and the numbers the finance so that is like keeping track of every nickel and dime i don't think that he's saying he's never going to do that he just wants to know at the meta level ye is direction mein ja raha hai is direction mein ja raha hai but wo karwane ka kaam is more strategic and i find it easy to be strategic as well as execution oriented as an well thank you so much bipin it's been a pleasure upasna a pleasure and a privilege meeting you both so that were the husband and wife duo of bipin preet singh and upasna taku of mobi quick we'll be back again with another episode of beyond the boardroom keep watching